chilling tales for dark nights. The Picture by Matthew Nichols Narrated by Otis Jiry. A young man asked his father one day if he could have a picture frame for his birthday. At the time, the father considered this to be odd since most young men, it seemed, were sharply banking towards the latest electronics to adorn the shelves of America's superstores. He was happy to oblige, though, He'd never been around very much. All the hours he'd worked had robbed him of many a familial event, and he saw this as a chance to make it up in some way. His son's request was very specific, an 11 by 17 sized frame. The father arched his eyebrows when he heard this and asked, Is it for a project you're working on in one of your studio classes? No, his son replied. The blues of his eyes aflamed with what the father took to be boyish excitement. But it is a special project of mine. He'd left it at that and walked up to his room. Two days later, after he got off work, the father went to a local craft store. He ambled up and down the aisles, looking over the picture frames that leaned on one another for support in their racks. The fake pictures within them smiled after him in endless rows of married couples advertising how complete life would be if people only bought this frame. After about 15 minutes of searching, the father found the perfect frame. It was a wood frame of deeply rich mahogany engraved with leaf carvings. His son's favorite subject was landscape art, so he knew his son would love it for whatever project he decided to frame. He ran it through the cash register, paid with his debit card, and wrapped it as soon as he got home. The next weekend, his son returned home from college to find a birthday cake flaming with 20 candles and his family crowded around the table, beaming. He blew the candles out and peeled the wrapping paper from the presents, the last of which was his picture frame. The son gave his father a hug, and the rest of the day blurred into evening. Everyone went home for the night, the son had taken his picture frame up to his room, leaving his father downstairs, reading a book with curiosity burning a hole in his mind. After a while, his son hurtled down the stairs and around the corner, down towards the basement. The father didn't usually do things like root around in his son's room, especially now that he was in college, but he was simply dying to see the project that his son wanted to frame. He set down his book slammed his recliner closed with his calves, then headed upstairs to his son's room. The father gently pushed the door open when he got there, taking in the scent of cinnamon and apples from the reed diffuser on top of his desk. The picture frame lay face down on his son's desk. Its stand jutted upward at an odd angle. Puzzlement and irritation swelled in the father's stomach. That was no way to treat a brand new picture frame. He flipped the stand down and picked it up and looked at it. The first thing that struck him was all the blood. It reddened everything in the picture, from the subject's clothes to the pavement on which he lay. The longer he looked at the picture, the more the father's heart pressed up into his throat. His gorge rose and his mouth worked itself in twitches. He saw himself reflected in the glass. His face was contorted in horror, yet he couldn't stop looking at the abused and mutilated face of the young man in the picture. The nose was an imploded crater of blackened flesh. One eye was closed under skin, crusted over with blood. The other stared sightlessly off in another direction. The broken jaw hung off to one side like a deflated balloon. The worst part was the jagged lacerations that had been carved into the subject's face. 
they crossed one another over and over like a grotesque tic-tac-toe puzzle. The father heard a noise behind him, and he whirled around to see the baby that his wife had pushed out of her with every ounce of strength she had. He saw the little boy he'd run alongside while teaching him how to ride a bike. He saw the acne-scarred teenager who brought his first girlfriend home during middle school. And he saw the same young man, a few years later, getting his high school diploma. He didn't want to see the thing that leaned against the door jamb with its arms crossed, regarding him like a cat hovering over an unsuspecting mouse. The son's eyes glittered in amusement, and a hungry smile split his face from ear to ear, darkly red like raw meat. The father felt a scream welling up from his bowels, but his constricted throat permitted no sound to exit his gaping mouth. Do you like it? the son asked. 